Hello, my name is Katie and welcome to my video. In honor of Nonfiction November, I am attempting to post at least one nonfiction video per week. We'll see how that goes. If it goes as I have planned, it'll work out fine. <laughs> Today is Tag Tuesday, so I'm going to do the nonfiction on booktube tag. This tag was created by Olive at the channel of Book Olive. If you are watching me, you probably already watch her. And if you're not watching her, then you definitely should be. Let's just hop into it because some of these answers may get a little rambly. We'll see. Question one, how much nonfiction do you read? This varies from month to month. And it also depends on my mood and what else is going on in my life. I think on average, I probably read about three nonfiction books per month. However, um, since I am currently in school, a lot of the time nonfiction just, I can't do it because I feel like I'm reading nonfiction all day. But yeah, three is usually what I shoot for. Question two, what kind of nonfiction videos do you make slash want to make on booktube? Now, my channel is still fairly new. I don't even think I've hit three months yet. So I haven't made a whole lot of nonfiction videos. What I would like to do in the future is nonfiction recommendations videos. And then I would also really like to do a, if you liked this fiction, try this nonfiction type of video. I think that would be really fun. Question three, what is your favorite subgenre of nonfiction? I don't know. I have been trying to come up with something that really feels like an actual answer for this. But what I've decided to go with is history because I feel like no matter what subject or genre you're on, you can always find history books within it. So I'm going history and that's my final answer. Question four, do you have a favorite nonfiction book? Yes, it's a, a booktube darling, uh, and that is The Five, The Untold Lives of... Oh my god, how come I can't remember this title? The Five, The Untold Lives of the Women Killed by Jack the Ripper by Hallie Rubenhold. I read this at the beginning of 2020, and I listened to it on audiobook. And first of all, the narration of the audiobook is fantastic so good. I started just listening to it on my drive to class and realized that I would be sitting in my car in the driveway for like a good 15-20 minutes because I didn't want to turn the audiobook off. Hallie Rubenhold did such a fabulous job researching the lives of these women and really bringing them to life and making you see them as more than what the media would have had you believe they were. And I loved it and I still think about it and I still recommend it all the time. Question five, what do you think keeps people from reading more nonfiction? I've thought about this a little bit. And I think for a lot of people, it just feels like homework. I came to this conclusion because I was telling my little sister about nonfiction November and explaining to her what it was and trying to express my excitement and she just stared at me and was like, I don't know, that just sounds like homework. <laughs> and I do see her point, but I, I disagree. I think people look at nonfiction as though they have to write a paper on it. And I think that's the wrong way of viewing nonfiction. <laughs> But just that, and I don't think it's for everybody anyway. Question six, why do you like nonfiction? So I'm an intensely curious person. I like to know a little bit about everything. This is why I've had so much trouble in choosing a major is because I just want to know all the things. So what I've decided to do instead of flopping around on majors is just read nonfiction and satisfy my curiosity that way. And uh, it's been going pretty well so far. Question seven, what's a nonfiction book you read because of booktube? Now I assume that there are several, 
But the one that immediately came to mind was Sea People, The Puzzle of Polynesia by Christina Thompson. I believe it was in the spring, and I can't remember if it was Emma from A Cup of Books or Olive from A Book Olive who was talking about this. It may have been both, actually. But I decided I needed to read it, and I picked it up in August during the History Challenge, and I think several people actually read that book during the History Challenge, and it, it was a great experience. I really enjoyed it. Question eight, what's the best nonfiction book you've read lately? I think I have to give that to The Last Castle by Denise Kiernan. This book was everything I, I wanted from it. It was a look at Gilded Age America, but it was mainly told within the context of all the people who came into contact with the Biltmore estate. And it was so well crafted that I kind of just want everybody to read it. Question nine, what are some of your nonfiction reading goals? I don't actually know if I have any. I've been thinking about this for, for a couple days now. And I can't honestly, like I'm pretty happy with where my nonfiction reading is at. I feel like I have a large variety of nonfiction that I read and I am comfortable with the roughly three nonfiction books a month. So I really don't think, I just don't think I have any real goals as far as that goes. But if you have goals, let me know. Let me know in the comments below. I might steal them. Question 10. What's your advice for incorporating more nonfiction reading into your diet? So I've given this some thought and I've come up with four things that I think really help with incorporating more nonfiction into your diet. The first is audiobooks. This is how I initially became successful at finishing audio, uh, finishing nonfiction books because I always had great intentions. It was the follow through that I really struggled with because I would hit a point where I got overwhelmed with other things or I just didn't really care about this particular section of the book. And audiobooks really helped me to just push past that, especially if you commute because you've got pretty much nothing else going on other than listening to the audiobook. My second piece of advice is to set small goals for yourself. Um, for example, when I first started really reading nonfiction, my goal was just 20 pages a day. 20 pages felt, it felt doable. It felt like it was a small enough amount that it wasn't overwhelming. And I kept doing that and I would suddenly realize that I'd read double that in one sitting because I had gotten to a point where I was just really invested in what was happening in the book. So I think just setting, it doesn't even have to, it doesn't necessarily even have to be like a page goal, just whatever type of goal works for you. I think just, just setting small attainable goals for it is really helpful. My third piece of advice is to find topics that interest you. Just because a lot of people on booktube are enjoying a book, doesn't mean that you necessarily will, especially if you're somewhat new to reading nonfiction. I really enjoyed reading shorter books or books that have small, easily, easily digestible sections, almost like a short story collection. So for example, The Disappearing Spoon by Sam Keen is chunks of like different stories but they all revolve around the discovery of the elements of the periodic table. Essay collections, I think, are also another good thing to read if you're fairly new, especially if you have something that you're passionate about, like um, feminism or something along those lines. You could read uh, Women in Power by Mary Beard. Th things of that nature, I think, help when you're first starting out. The other thing you can do is if you have maybe a person that's like a historical figure that you truly love and have read a lot of fiction about, switching to nonfiction about them ends up being fairly easy. Finally, uh, don't treat it like a homework assignment. 
you there is no exam at the end you don't need to write a paper on it so if you zone out during sections that that's okay <laughs> if you find yourself skimming over a portion that you don't really find that interesting that's okay too what nonfiction is supposed to be is for you to find enjoyment and enjoyment in learning for example there's a book I'm reading right now and it has a section on computers of the future and a lot of it I either a already know or B don't actually care about so those sections ended up getting skimmed over a little bit I found myself zoning out a lot however the next section was on medical advancements um, that are predicted for the future and I was finding that fascinating I couldn't even put the book down so don't don't stress too much when reading nonfiction you don't have to like remember everything just enjoy what you're reading and you will end up with a takeaway from it the final question is a bonus question and it is to recommend some channels who read nonfiction what I'm going to do for this I think is first obviously Olive from a book Olive she created the tag she reads a ton of nonfiction she has great recommendations and then Emma from a couple books also has a lot of great nonfiction uh, book recommendations um, I also want to recommend Justin from Triumphal Reads. He reads a lot of, he does like a lot of nature writing, but then he also is very passionate about the Roman Empire. So if that's something that interests you, check out his channel. He has a lot of books on, on that. Then I'm going to mention a few channels that are fairly small, but that I know are participating in nonfiction, uh, in nonfiction November. Um, first off, there's Brittany from Literarily Smitten, uh, Rosie from her self-titled channel, Rosie Cockshit, uh, Renee from The Librarian of Alexandria, and Anna from Anna on the Shelves, I think is the title name. I'll have them all linked in the description box below so you can go check them out. I'm sure they would love to have you over there. And that's it. That's the tag. Uh, let me know. If you have any answers to any of these questions, let me know also if you have any channel recommendations for people who read nonfiction. I would love to go check them out. If you like my content, subscribe. I'd love to see you in my comments. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.